Hello there, this is Toby. I'm sorry for the bad lighting here. I'm coming to you from the evening. Let's continue the series where we make a programming language. I'm going to uh, finish up what I started last time. Uh, last time we wrote the parser to parse a lambda expression and we used this guy as the test file. So at the moment, we are able to parse lambda syntax like this and uh, be able to generate AST files to verify what I just said. I'm going to parse this file, example 4, which is going to generate this AST file for us. And we have a lambda expression here, as I would expect. What we would like to do is to get a program like this working. The big thing is to write the code generator for Lambda expressions. However, uh, last time in terms of the parser, uh, I have forgot some aspect of the syntax. So I'm going to try to fix that this time first before we go ahead and build the code generator. And that aspect of the syntax is a uh, white space, as in, in the case where we have a arrow function where the right hand side is simply an expression, I want it to be possible to have this extra empty line here. And also, in some cases, I would like to be able to have function expressions span multiple lines, such as an if statement like this. I would like the conditional and the consequent and alternate clauses to span multiple lines like this. So even function expressions, I would like to have the ability to span multiple lines. And also, another case, these empty lines, I'm pretty sure the grammar at the moment will not handle this. What I want to do is to fix our grammar so that it can account for all of this white space situation. And we'll add an extra blank line at the end for good measure, perhaps at the beginning as well. So let's try to parse this file with the current parser. And okay, very first line, we get a syntax error already because we have a blank line and blank lines are not supported. Okay, how are we going to fix this? Well, I'm going to try for a more uh, perhaps complete solution. This time, what I'm going to do is come up with some additional symbols, helper symbols to help me. I want a version of optional white space that allows for new line characters to be within them. And I'm going to call that multi-line optional white space. Like that, maybe? And then for the mandatory white space, maybe I'll make it like this. Maybe. Either this or this. Maybe this one, where it's just one side of it is like an extension of the existing white space symbols, okay? And the way we're going to denote that is an optional multi-line white space. It's going to be defined similarly to the normal optional white space, except the character the repeater is going to repeat is either going to be a normal white space or a new line character. That's the only difference. And then for the mandatory one, you guessed it. We just change the star to a plus to mean one or more versus zero or more. I think that is it for this one, but I want one more symbol. The other symbol I want to have will help me solve the cases like this, where I would like at least one new line separating this statement from this statement. One or more new line. I'll call it LB, short for line break. So I'll put optional white space before and after this guy. In between, there needs to be one or more of these. What are these? Well, it's a new line. Um, in some optional white space. Actually, if I'm going to do that, then I should not have the beginning one because that would give us an ambiguous grammar. If you have one of these guys, you definitely have one or more new line characters. If there's optional white space before the first line break, that'll be captured here. If there's one after the last line break, that'll be captured here. Now we are armed with these three new symbols. We're going to try to go use them. The first thing I want to fix is allowing these blank lines. And that can be fixed by using this mandatory line break in place of this guy. Actually, I'm not sure that will work for the very first statement, but it will probably work for these in between ones. We could also write this statement using a repeater as well. 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to use this repeater syntax to write this one. I think that will simplify it. So if we did that, that will look something like this with that. And then I'll definitely want to change this. This is index one now. And I don't want the triple dot here because that's no longer an array. Let's count indexes. This is an array. It's going to hold another array within it because it's a repeater. And that array will, it's actually an array of arrays. So this is zero, one, two. This array is three. So this is data three is correct, except I'm going to need to unbox this inner array of arrays. I'll call this guy repeated and I'll call this guy rest statements. There's going to be like any number of these inner arrays with that have four elements in it. So say repeated map chunks. I don't know what's a good name for this. Zero, one, two. Okay, these are the rest of the statements I'm going to spread them on. I need to generate a parser first. Now I'm going to run one of the previous programs that I know works. This one doesn't work yet because I haven't completed Lambda, Lambda function feature yet. Let me try example three. That does work. Great. That's good enough for me. So now, now that I have this written in this way, I'm thinking I can change this one into a mandatory line break that'll allow us to have multiple blank lines like so. However, this doesn't allow us to have the multiple blank lines at the beginning. Hmm. What we could do though is have an optional one of this. I think I can use this. So this goes on the beginning. This is an optional multi-line white space. This should go away because this already captures optional white space that can go here. If I had double optional white space, that could make an ambiguous grammar, I think. And then over here, I think optional space over here is appropriate. Actually, no, it's not appropriate because this already can capture optional white space at the beginning. Is that true? Hmm. I feel like this could give an ambiguous grammar right now, but if I took it away, then there might be some cases that it doesn't properly cover. I might just have to test it out uh, with different test cases to see. I'm going to start with this case and try to parse this example number five. Okay, the place where it failed is actually here where this there is an arrow function. So that's one of the things I wanted to fix. So might as well just go fix it right now. So the, at the place where there's a lambda body, right, following this fat arrow, uh, I want to allow for optional multi-line white space here. And then that's going to shift this index here. So let's try this. Uh, there seems to be a error in the converter. So I'm just going to go debug that. Pick out the line number here, which is 16. Ah, it's over here. The, the, the code that I just modified. Let's see here. It's saying repeated doesn't exist, I think, because we're trying to call a map of undefined. Actually, this ought to be index two. I miscounted. Let me try to do that again. Okay, rest statement is not defined. That needs to be pluralized. Let me regenerate the parser again. And okay, next problem. An expected new line token here. I wanted this to work, which is having a new line character that can come after one of the arguments of a function call. So that's going to be in an arc list of a fun call. And that's going to be here. So this is a um, mandatory multi-line white space. There's any number of white space tokens or new line tokens. Whoa. Okay, now we have a problem. Right after the open paren, I have a new line. So that's not been allowed yet. So that's this white space here. So I want to make that white space a, this time is optional multi-line white space. 
and the stuff that comes after the arc list that can also be an optional multi-line white space so regenerate the parser and parse it again no parse found uh oh things get trickier when there's no parse found I'm gonna try to do some test case simplification to debug this. So I'm gonna maybe remove one of the nested if statements. See if it parses. No. Oh, still no parse found. I think there's something about the white space handling that is not kosher. Now it's good. Oh, so having a extra blank line at the end breaks everything. What about a blank line at the beginning is okay. Blank line in the middle is okay. Okay, it's just the blank line at the end that breaks everything. So I'm gonna undo out of all of that, bring the code back. That was an example of test case simplification, by the way. So yes, just the presence of a blank line. Oh, but now I have a different problem. We have an ambiguous grammar. So we're gonna need to dig into that as well. I first wanna solve this problem. The fact that a ending blank line breaks everything. And I think the way I can solve it, maybe have like a optional multi-line white space at the end like this. Okay. The grammar is ambiguous at the moment. I think we need to check out the reason for the ambiguity. There's a couple of ideas I have for uh, for fixing ambiguous grammars. One idea is uh, in the parse script, whenever there's an ambiguous grammar, we just output an AST file for each of those different AST trees. And then we inspect the AST files to see if there's a difference between them. Let's do that. So there's gonna be more than one result when there's an ambiguous grammar. So we're gonna basically loop through the results. We'll copy this block and put it in and each time grab a different result based on the index i here to output the file name. Here we're going to replace the extension dot small with dot ast but as a cheat I'm actually going to insert the index right in front of the dot ast dash i dot ast as the output file name. Let's try that. Oh, we have four separate different ASTs. One thing we can do is do a diff. Um, if you're on Unix, there's a diff command that can compare two different files. So I'm gonna use that to see if the files are different. They're not. All four files are actually identical, which is nice in one way and it's not nice in one way. The way in which it's nice is that I know it didn't come up with a different interpretation of the code. Even though the grammar is ambiguous, each in interpretation of the code is actually the same. So I know the ambiguous bits are all in dealing with the white spaces, which makes sense because that's the thing that we just changed. Probably made a mistake there. Um, I'm gonna try to get rid of this one. Kind of suspect that one. We still have an ambiguous grammar, even after deleting that one. Another thing I can do, which I think I'm going to do right now, is again, use test case simplification. Simplify the structure of this program. So um, this huge block of code is a big deal. So I'm going to remove that. See if it still gives me an ambiguous grammar, and it doesn't. So the presence of this very big statement is what is needed to give me the ambiguous grammar. I'm gonna remove move one of these if statements to see what that does. We still have an ambiguous grammar. I'm gonna simplify it even further to this. Even then, there's an ambiguous grammar. So let's look at this first because we have to solve one thing at a time. So even with this lambda function, we have an ambiguous grammar. Look, let's look into that. What could be causing this? We gotta look at the definition of a lambda function. Oh, I have an idea. It must be the fact that there's some white, optional white space here, as well as some optional multi-line white space here. 
when you have optional things, it makes it really hard for the parser because when the parser sees a white space, it could either match this to that white space or it could not match this to that white space, but then match the next white space to the actual white space. Um, that's a really easy way to have ambiguous grammars. So I'm going to avoid that and just unify them into one place. After the fat arrow, we're going to have some optional multi-line white space and then the lambda body which can either be an expression or a block like this let's see if this solves the ambiguity and it does so now i'm going to bring back some more code see if this okay great that was the problem so these four asts that were generated because of the ambiguous parse i'm going to delete them and look at this so first of all it ignores these extra blank lines so those are not represented in the ast at all that is by design and then we have a var assignment to the variable fit the value of which is a lambda and then lambda has one parameter which is n the body is null that's wrong so we got to fix that. I think that's because I just changed this rule without shifting the index back. Let's fix that. Looks like that was fixed. We have a body now, which is a function call to the if function. If is a function in this language. We're not going to have an actual if statement. And then within the if statement, the first argument is another function call to the eq function taking the arguments n and 1 the next argument it to of f is actually a lambda whose body has a value of 1 and no parameters and then the next one is another lambda who has no parameters and the body is another function called to f so all of this looks good all of this checks out and i'm pretty happy with this uh, even though we ran into a hiccup there we were able to uh, debug our way through that. Oh, one more thing, I guess. I would like to change this to use one of my new symbols. Then a block that's enclosed by these braces. I would like to change these guys to use one of these things as one of these new symbols. I'm going to call this a um, mandatory line break with optional white space around them. Let's see whether I'm still referencing the new line token in other places. No, these are the only places where I'm referencing the new line token and that's how I want it to be. Let me double check that this didn't break anything by testing it against the same file. And uh, yeah, I think that worked great. Seeing that that work of uh, handling white spaces took quite a bit of time, I'm going to stop this episode here. And then in the next episode, we will work on the code generator for Lambda functions.